Hello all, welcome back to Carrot with Vasant YouTube channel. My name is Vasant. I hope you all doing well. So this is a series as you all know where we will be doing a lot of mock interviews. Today with me I have Chandrasekhar. So Chandrasekhar is a two year experience front end developer. Right now he is working for Decathlon. So this interview is going to be on various topics. We will be starting with a scenario driven question followed by basics of JavaScript then basics of React JS. Lot of things to learn. So please watch the video till the end. In case if Chandrasekhar do not answer certain questions properly at the end I am going to give answers to those others. So please watch the video till the end. Chandrasekhar if you can introduce yourself we can get started. Hi, uh, my name is Chandra Shekhar. Uh, I have uh, the education side of it. I have done my engineering uh, in computer science. And the uh, experience side of it, I have been working as front-end developer uh, using tools like React, uh, Next.js, HTML, CSS for past two years. And Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Let's get started immediately. Let's say, Chandra Shekhar, you have a scenario where you have to build a video calling application, something like Google Meet. Okay, what are all the challenges that comes to your mind, Chandrasekhar? Building a video calling application like that. So, uh, building a video calling application, let's say the first thing would be um, uh, security as to how yeah. we're gonna maintain the security of an application so that uh, anyone whoever wants to join the call wouldn't be allowed. Just uh, yeah. authorized persons would be allowed to join the call. Yeah. The other would be how uh, we'll maintain the network. Maybe right. th there is a different bandwidth and uh, there is switch between the networks as to how we'll handle yeah. that. Correct. And uh, uh, there would be if it is uh, uh, browser based for video calling, then uh, th th there'll be things like cross border, cross browser compatibility. Okay. So the different browsers. So how do we handle that? Yes. And there are other edge cases, uh, something like yeah. if the user has uh, exited or maybe then there is some network issue. Yes. So how do we handle it? So we should have some hard exit or something like that. Exactly. And um, that would be um, it may be um, providing access or to like integrate it with your application. Correct. So as you rightly told Chandrasekhar, along with that, there are multiple other problems whenever we're integrating with a video calling. So a lot of these problems have recently been solved by a tool called Zigo Cloud. I've been using the Zigo Cloud across multiple projects of mine. See, the advantages of it is like, first thing is a plug and play. If you are a developer who hasn't worked a lot about the video calling, all you have to do is just take their APIs using the help of their powerful UI kit. You have, all you have to do is just take their UI kits, register a project, you will be able to introduce, introduce you know, inculcate the video calling into your web, mobile app with React Native, React JS, Angular, React Native, and uh, Android iOS. Everywhere you'll be able to integrate the video calling seamlessly. And they also have not just the video calling, they also have audio calling and other multimedia facilities. So also they have like a um, beautiful thing is you don't even have to worry about the customization, whether you want a group video call, whether you want one-on-one -on -one video call, full screen. And as you can see, like multiple templates like this, all of them are readily available for you. And all you have to do is just go and register in their portal. As soon as you register, you are even going to get like 10,000 seconds of free duration. Like for first 10,000 seconds, you can experiment and learn about Zigo Cloud. And then you can start using it officially. So everything that somebody wants whenever they want to integrate with uh, video calling, audio calling, or any other multimedia things are readily available with Zigo Cloud. I would suggest you and all the fellow developers to use Zigo Cloud. Okay. So now getting back into the further questions of the video calling Chandrasekhar. Okay. I'm sure. Have you ever got a chance to work with a video call in the past in the show? Yeah, I've, I've, I've had the opportunity so, to work with me. the... Now, my question is, see, we have to transfer video from person X to person Y, correct? So video, yeah. end of the day, there is nothing called the media that exists in reality. We have to convert that into yes. some form that is transferable, correct? So tell me which protocol we should use if we have to transfer the video call between, like video data between one user to another user. I'm asking network so protocol. we have hmm. yeah network protocols we can use tcp yeah. or udp so based on our uh, preference we can uh, if you go with tcp and udp what do you think is the primary difference in the shaker uh tcp would be i think the security and uh, the two-way communication and uh, other parameters like let's say bandwidth uh, okay. Not very sure, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, what you saying is correct. TCP is very secure, no data loss. All data is basically safely transferred. Uh, whereas in case of the UDP, there is some packet loss is possible. Okay, for a video calling application, I would suggest it's always good to use UDP than TCP because we are finding some packets are lost. For example, when we are speaking, a couple of packets loss will not create a lot of problems. 
so it's always good to yeah. use live streaming yeah. yes exactly correct so let me ask you one fundamental question around the same again video call is also same let's say video has to be transmitted from you to me we in some the same like zoom we are using right now or in google meet we are using just explain me the ar- architecture how it's going to transfer from you and it'll come to me what are all the things that would happen behind the scenes in a high level okay uh, so uh, let's say there are like two people connected in the call so first there has to be a network connection a socket okay. has to be created so both okay. are connected okay. and we have to use uh, one form of uh, let's say uh, transmission protocol let's say if you're using udp okay. you use udp to transfer data from one to another in a okay. secure way and uh, maybe if it's if it's very secure and it has to be encrypted and decrypted or something and the uh, data has to be converted and displayed got it sure sure so, okay, present yeah anything else you want to add anything uh, so something like chat application we can use something like socket io where we can uh, good yeah at a high level there is some but some more interfaces can be added like probably when you building it into some more things can be added Can you please present your search, uh, screen, Janeshekar? Let's solve the problem. The problem is very simple, Janeshekar. Listen to me very carefully. Okay. The problem is you have to have like four characters: A, B, C, D. Consider this A, B, C, D as buttons. A is a button, B is a button, C is a button, D is a button. Every time, whenever you click a character, let's say you click on A, in below you will be printing A and a aroma. A and arrow. Arrow. Okay, this arrow. Arrow. Okay. 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 You click on B. Are you going to put B and an arrow man? You can click on C. Okay. You want to put C and an arrow man? You can click on D. You can click on D and an arrow man. Okay. Okay. So let's say you click the same character second time. Well, like for example, A B C D. Then you click A again. Just add A to the end of the list. Am I clear, Janesh? Okay. Basically, keep making that more, more like a train. You are making a train of okay. all of it. Can we start, Janesh? Yeah, we have like around ten to fifteen minutes to solve that. Is very straightforward. So I have it a little slow. But I'll, we can see the difference in the next session because I put the control log inside this. Yeah. Is this good? Yeah. Instead of logging, can you put it on the screen? Like I want to see if Nagar H stack can you render it? Yeah. Okay. Chandrasekhar, oh, yeah. it's working. Okay, so let's slightly extend it now, Chandrasekhar. The ask is, let's say you can be in the this sports and books only. The ask is, let's say you already have a character in the thing. For example, in um, you have click on A B C D. Okay, you click on A again. Okay, or, or let's say you, uh, let's say you click on C again. C is already part of this frame. Okay, or uh, what we have to do is we have to remove that C and its arrow mark. Okay. And put that C in the beginning of the list. For example, we had A, B, C, D. You click on C again; it will become C, A, B, D. C is okay. removed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if we have A, B, C, D, mm-hmm. and if I click on C again, it has to be C, A, B, D. Correct. So whichever the position it is there currently, that position has to be sliced, okay. and it should be kept in the beginning. For somebody that is already in the beginning, okay. If it is already in the beginning, then you can you don't have to do anything. You can just skip it. Get my point? Please get me. I will have five to seven minutes to implement this challenge. Okay. Yeah. If you want to know about some syntax, let me know. Yeah. Uh, to check position of a let's say a value. You want to know where where that particular character present? Yeah. Then you can use That's it true. index index of right. Which one you are using?
we have last two to three minutes in the shift. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, this works. Click on D now. Sir, D? Click on D. No, no, not B, D. D, okay. A. D. D. Yeah. D. D. Yeah, yeah. D. D. D for dog. D. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. We'll take a bit of time from this uh, channel session. Okay. If audience members are watching the video, if you feel like there is a better option to solve this, please do for it and if you are repository or just in the comment section, me or channel seeker can give you and tell whether the right answer or not. Okay, so I'm sharing a snippet with you in the chat section for this snippet. Okay, please copy this snippet. So, uh, so every second uh, the value changes. So initially it's zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. So it'll print uh, uh, like increase the value of every, no. Okay. No, it'll print. No, no, it'll print. Uh, Wait, wow. just a second. Please, please. Okay. Yeah, so it will start from zero. And for every second, it will add a number. It will be like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, can you try running the code? Will it run? Have you exported? Please export it. Yeah. yeah okay. yeah. Okay, so every time basically it is incrementing the value of count. Initially, the value of count was zero, and we have an interval that is running at every one second. So, because of which the, the value of the count it is keep incrementing, correct? But if you observe, do you feel like the value of count is changing every time, or the count value is always one? What it is? So, the value of count uh... always changing, right? Or it is always yeah, it's changing. In line yeah. number 12, uh, line number 12, if you remove the count, what will happen? Don't so remove. If you remove the, okay, if you remove the count and we refresh the this mm -hmm. one, then it will be zero. It will not change. Okay, please do that. Okay, one, sorry. Yeah. So first time it increases the value and it remains there. Correct, correct. So I'm sharing another snippet in the second now. Okay. So please take this snippet. Okay. And uh, try it, tell me how many times the console.log will be printed in this case. The question is simple. How many times the yeah. console.log log will be printed? Okay. Let, let that error be there on the line number 90 so that you can guess. Oh. First. Actually, that should be my. Okay, component. this should have a different name, right? Uh, my yes. component. Okay. Don't give that. For a while, let's imagine. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. the code would run. Okay. Let's imagine line number three is a different name. Okay. The ask could be how many times the console dot log will be printed. Let's assume line. Let's assume like line number three is my component actually. Okay. Or else okay. we get another thing. You could like, uh, like in the export default, right? Instead of app, you make something else so that anyhow you'll get error. Yeah. Yeah. And line number. Three, you make it as my company. Hmm. Now, yes, output. So, not output. Basically, I want to know how many times the console log is printed. That's my question. So, is it, it like the first time when it renders, or is and every time we click on increment, how many times? Uh, yeah. First time when the component renders. So let's first say first time when the component. Okay, we tell you. Let's say you run the code. Okay, and then you keep clicking on the button. Let's imagine. Okay. okay, you can tell that way. Like, let's say, for example, first it'll be shown once, then every time when you click on a button, it'll be keep implementing like that. You can tell. Okay, and so audience, it increases. Yeah. Yes, yeah, audience so also it increases every 
yeah yeah wait wait one second how do you answer if you know the answers to this please mention that in the comment section like uh, what is the answer question number 3 i think and your answer please go ahead chandeep yeah yeah so every time we click on increment uh, we will have a console log hmm Okay. We use memo here, and right. we are changing the props value. Hmm. So it does get re-render every time we change the right. value. So the let's see, yeah, let's see. You run the code. The first time the component render will be printed. Uh, I think, correct? No, no, don't run. No, no. You run it. The component render will be printed once. Then following every time whenever you click on the increment button, it's going to be printed. Am I right, Chandrasekhar? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Please let's yeah. run the code now. Yeah. Okay, component rendered. I'm able to see once. Okay, now click on the button. Yeah. Are you clicking? Component rendered. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Can you go back to the code now? Can you check once again? Yeah. So, so we have memoized. It's a memoized component. Correct in line number three. Can you talk briefly what is memoized component? Uh, sir, what is memoize component? Yes. yes. Uh, so uh, memoize memoize components are the one which we can uh, avoid re-rendering if the prop that we have passed to it has not changed. Okay, got it. So, got it. Can... so because of this reason, what is happening every time whenever we click increment, then as the value of count is changing, the child component is also changing. Correct. For example, instead of count, we would have passed another prop to the child component. It would have not re-rendered. Correct, Chandra Shekhar. Correct. Okay, you can stop sharing, Chandra Shekhar. Okay, we are at the last slide. I think we have left with just two more minutes. Uh, I'm done from my end, Chandra Shekhar. I have noted on my feedback. Before I share my feedback, do you have any questions for me, Chandra Shekhar? Um, no, I have no question. So, see, so Chandra Shekhar, oh. I'll tell you know, the very first. So, the way you are uh, you are able to solve the problem, that ABCD problem, right? So, you are able to think through a problem very quickly and solve it, which is good. Okay, and uh, even the guessing the output type of questions as well. I know they are not very hard; they are more like easy to medium sort of questions. But still, you are able to guess the uh, whatever they have the program would execute and guess the output almost accurately, Chandrasekhar, which is good. Couple of suggestions that I wanted to improve Chandrasekhar is, especially in the machine coding problem, right? Uh, let's take the first variation where you click on A, B, C, D, and we have keep forming the chain, correct? Right? You did not ask me like how long the chain would be continuing, correct? Right? So always make sure whenever such questions come, you ask the extremities. The reason why I'm saying this is you cannot be keep doing that. Right? Somewhere they should end. But otherwise, you end up taking all the memory. Correct? Right? Ask those questions. One. Point number two: Do not start debugging all of a sudden. Uh, whenever such problems come, right? So even if you have to debug, take interviews permission. Point number two. Point number three: uh, uh, Like before running the code, always ask the interviewer. You don't run by yourself. Also, point number four, I would want to suggest you like get buy-in on the approach. Like, are you comfortable? Is the interviewer fine with the approach? Because you stuck somewhere, you should help. Correct. This is at a very high level, Chandrasekhar. Rest all the things, whatever it did, looks good to me. If I were interviewing you with the question that I asked, I would definitely select you, Chandrasekhar. Okay. Any closing thoughts? Uh the interview was really good. So the questions and all of it. Okay. So look forward to maybe take another interview. Maybe if it's yeah. possible, something a level up. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you thank so you. much. Yeah, thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you. Yeah, all the audience who have watched the video, if you like the video, please like the video, uh, comment whatever you felt honestly, share the video with your friends. Thank you so much for watching.